Hi, and welcome to our video. We're going to discuss uh, precipitation measurement, and specifically, we're looking at snow now. So in this video, we're going to talk about recording gauges. And the recording gauges in the, this video that we're going to discuss are the snow pillow, which includes the snow tail, also uh, weighing gauges, and then finally the tipping bucket. Starting out with the snow pillow, basically what the snow pillow is, of course, it's an instrument that measures the uh, estimate of the snow water equivalent in the snowpack. So this would be the uh, snow depth water equivalent. And um, it's basically its operating principle is that uh, the mass of snow on top of this pillow uh, produces uh, pressure, which is measured by a pressure transducer. So it can measure uh, the depth of snow, the water equivalent of the depth of snow based on the density of the snow. So typically it's composed of either one or four panels. Uh, these are either made of uh, rubber or stainless steel. They're filled with antifreeze, so they don't uh, freeze during the winter, of course. And of course the weight of the pillows uh, forces uh, uh, the fluid uh, towards a pressure transducer. That pressure of the fluid uh, is measured by uh, a sensor and then that is converted to a digital signal and that can be transmitted uh, through the SNOWTEL system. So what is SNOWTEL? SNOWTEL stands for Snow Telemetry and basically it's an automated system um, that's uh, located typically in western uh, United States um, many locations in the western United States. Uh, what it does, it measures snowpack and related climate uh, information, um, such as uh, temperature, dew point, wind, and, and other factors. These are operated by the National Resources Conservation Service, which is part of the Department of Agriculture in the United States. And as I mentioned, it's more concentrated in the western United States. So here are the different types of variables that the snow tail can measure. Uh, air temperature, wind speeds, solar radiation, humidity, snow depth, snow water content. So it's got a lot of different types of sensors besides just the snow pillow. The snow pillow is just one part of the sensor. Uh, also, it has a transmitter. So the information that is obtained through all the various sensors can be sent remotely to a location where they can monitor it. So the snow tail system, basically its purpose is to monitor uh, hydrological information in remote areas. So they use that information uh, from mountainous areas and other locations that are difficult to get to. Uh, they use that information to forecast uh, floods and also the water supply. And also it's used for general climate research. There's um, many snow tail systems across the Western United States, over 600 in 13 different states and as I mentioned typically these are located in uh, mountainous areas where it's difficult to access or perhaps it may be restricted so you can get information where there's no roads. So that's your snow pillow and snow tail systems. The next is uh, weighing uh, systems and we've already talked about the AWPAG uh, when we discussed precipitation measurement when we're looking at rainfall. The AWPAG can also measure snowfall. And as the snow falls, it falls into the bucket, the plastic bucket. Remember we said that the bucket is filled with glycol so it doesn't freeze. And we said that it can collect quite a bit of precipitation. So as this precipitation, as the snow falls into the bucket, of course it falls and melts in the antifreeze. Uh, the additional weight from the snowfall is measured and uh, that produces an equivalent of the water mass uh, in the snowfall. So this is for recent snow or snowfall. It produces the snowfall water equivalent. Now, of course, the AWPAG is located outside during the winter. It's continuously operational, so the rim is heated to prevent ice from forming along the mouth of the bucket. And the AWPAG um, is a part of the ASOS system. Another type of device that measures uh, snowfall water equivalent is the heated tipping bucket. And these are used at uh, many locations uh, still 
uh, such as AWOS uh, locations um, where um, you have uh, older um, you know, weather uh, systems. So the tipping bucket uh, has a funnel, and of course we discussed this already, there's a bucket at the bottom that measures one one hundredth of an inch of precipitation. How does it measure snow? Well, of course, once again, it has to melt the snow. So the funnel is heated and so is the drain tube. As the precipitation falls in, it melts as it hits the funnel and it funnels down to hit the tipping bucket, fill up, fills up the bucket, and that records the amount of precipitation. So uh, the precipitation that's measured is new precipitation. In other words, it's the snowfall water equivalent. So it measures the amount of water in the recent snowfall. Now some problems with the heated tipping bucket is since the funnel is heated, uh, if it's heated excessively, then as the precipitation falls, it'll evaporate a sublimate in the funnel or in the drain, and it won't go reported, or it will underreport the amount of precipitation. Conversely, just the opposite, um, if there is not sufficient melting, then you'll start to get ice form in the funnel and also it forms through the uh, drain and it will prevent um, water or fluid from flowing uh, down into the buckets. So it will underreport uh, liquid. However, uh, as the temperatures warm up outside, if there's still a mass of snow in the funnel, then it'll all come out at once. So it produces a false surge of precipitation. We discussed snow pillows, weighing gauges, and also uh, tipping buckets. In this video, we're going to discuss sonic ranging sensors and also airborne surveys. So first, the sonic ranging sensor. The sonic ranging sensor is basically a transmitter to receiver that sends ultrasonic sound waves. Uh, those sound waves are converted actually to a distance or a depth of snow. And it does that by bouncing the sound wave off of the snow and then the sound wave comes back to the receiver. This is a uh, downward pointing uh, transmitter and the receiver of course is also pointing down so that it can receive the returning sound wave and measuring the time that it takes for the sound wave to go down and back divide that by two and if you know the speed of sound you can figure out the distance from the transmitter to the top of the snow. So uh, you do need to know though what uh, the distance is from the transmitter down to the ground. So as snow accumulates that distance will be shorter and shorter between the transmitter and the top of the snow. So um, you know you need to actually uh, the sensor needs to have a, a bare ground before it can start figuring out the depth of the snow. Now the problem with uh, using sound is that sound depends, the speed of sound depends upon temperature. And of course, uh, if the sensor is out in the uh, elements, then the temperature will vary. Uh, so um, it needs some independent source of temperature to figure out uh, how fast sound is traveling. If not, then it assumes that it is, the temperature is zero degrees Celsius. And of course, this instrument measures snow depth. Now the problems that you can have with this sensor, of course, is temperature. Uh, if the temperature is not correct, then you're gonna get an incorrect uh, depth of snow. Uh, also, if you set it up on a tilted surface, then you're not gonna get uh, an accurate reading. And same thing with the sensor. If the sensor is tilted or if the surface is uneven, then you're not necessarily gonna get the true measurement of the depth of the snow on the ground. So those are a few different types of recording systems. We'll have another video that talks about uh, other systems.